You know, a lot of times walking away isn't easy, but it may be very necessary. And I know that can be a tough pill to swallow. I know many people, might be you, are struggling with making that decision or taking that next step. But you have to understand when things have gotten to a point that this cannot continue as is anymore, that this cannot move forward any longer, that it is in the best interest of you and, and all involved that we move in a completely new direction. All right. And that's why it's so important to be able to recognize when you reach the point where your relationship is essentially over. And again, I know that may not be what many want to hear, but it's what you need to hear right now. And I'm going to help you understand when that time has come. But let me say this. You know, I'm, I'm all about exhausting our options in, in many cases, not all, because some situations are just two people who do not belong together and that has been evident from the start. But in other issues or other situations, scenarios, it may be less clear. And this is where I think at least making sure you take the step of getting a third party involved through counseling and therapy is a great thing to do. And that's why I want to say thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video because I know how many people out there need that, that outside individual that can help them process their situation or understand what steps need to be taken, how they, how they can best handle what they're currently going through. And that's why BetterHelp is an amazing company for you to check out. And so I truly recommend checking out BetterHelp because they can connect you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Stefan Speaks. I know starting therapy can be hard and the right therapist for you may not be in your area. And some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy uncomfortable. To get started, you go to BetterHelp and you can fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. So start your journey today with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Stefan Speaks. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. All right, so let's get to these signs that the relationship is over. And one of the biggest signs, if not the biggest, is that the issues have been addressed and no progress has been made, all right? So, you know, I'm a big believer in when you see red flags, you just don't run. And that a lot of issues that happen in relationships and even in dating are sometimes just misunderstandings that can be cured and fixed by proper healthy communication, okay? A lot of people aren't always aware or understand how certain behaviors are wrong or are causing a problem. And they need, they need you to break down to them why this is an issue, all right? And as much as you may think, well, they should know they're a grown adult, they just don't. And that's why we have to be willing to communicate. And I've even, it just reminded me of one time I had a client, a man who did not understand how his struggle to be more compassionate in certain moments with his partner was such a problem because he was just raised at the tough love, being straightforward and all of that. And to him, it's like, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to help. But it's like, no, you, you're hurting her by the way that you're handling things. You're too rough with her. She's more sensitive. You got to be more considerate of how she feels and how this affects her, Right. But it was through talking, it was through breaking it down for him that he gained a better understanding. And because he cared about her, he wanted to address it. Now, did it mean he was perfect tomorrow? 
No. Did it mean that he didn't ever have a moment of sliding back into that extra rough self of his? His No. All right? But what you saw was him making progress. What you saw was him trying and getting better at the issue. And that's the key here. If you've addressed it and they're making effort and progress, then I'm not going to say, oh, relationship is done, forget it, because it's not perfectly where it needs to be. But when you've addressed it and there's no effort, no progress, nothing, then what are we doing? Now, remember I said addressing it with healthy communication, maybe addressing it with a third party, getting a coach or a therapist, right? If you've done it in a way that you know this has been properly communicated, and, and let's just say, because let's be real, as much as people might talk and say, well, what, after I've addressed it once, it's over, most people have, end up addressing it a few times before they finally cut the cord. And so I'm okay if it had to be addressed maybe twice. I think more than twice, we, we got to really forget about it. But let me say this, for you to be more confident in being able to say, I addressed it properly and clearly explained myself. I want to suggest something to you. Write it in a letter or email. The reason is because verbal communication of concerns, issues, feelings tend to go left, right? Because people are very emotionally invested. So the way that you may come across in that communication might contribute to them being defensive or you may not use all your words correctly. They might start to deflect. They may get distracted. There's so much that can go wrong trying to discuss these things verbally. Now, I'm not saying it can never be accomplished, but it's, to me, not the most effective approach. By doing it via letter or email, you're giving yourself an opportunity to fully express yourself. Make sure you're leaving no stone unturned. Make sure you're breaking it down and explaining things properly, checking your tone, like it allows you to really get the message across in the most effective manner. And then what's great is because a lot of people, when you speak to them, are listening to rebuttal, okay? But when they read something, they're reading to comprehend. So there's, there's, a, there's a more willingness to try to understand what's being said here and take it in because they don't have to respond in the moment. They get to sit with this. They get to process this. So it hits them deeper, all right? Or it has a better chance of hitting them deeper. So I really encourage all in a relationship, and this can be whether it's a romantic relationship, family relationship, whatever, do these things via letter. And then if you guys want to discuss the letter, through verbal communication, great, that's cool. But start off with a letter, I believe, is going to be a much more effective approach. But to getting back to the original point, if you've done that, if you've taken the positive measures that you can to communicate the issue and no progress is being made, then we have to accept this isn't going to work. Because the reality is that many people get with individuals who they're just not on the same page with. Or who just isn't genuinely serious about being with them. Or let's say in some cases, they have deeper issues that are not allowing them to make the progress that is necessary. And people will then sometimes fall into the trap of letting the sympathy of that keep them attached to this individual. But that's not what you should be doing because now you're only enabling the behavior. If anything, fine. They have a deeper issue. They have to resolve that. They have to be willing to go get help. Whether that's go get help together with you or going on their own, but help is needed. And if they're unwilling to take those steps to try to fix whatever the underlying issues is that's blocking them from making progress, you still have to let them go. It still means this relationship is over as it is. And I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more why I said it like that because I'll keep that for later. Let's put a pin in that, but let's, let's move on to the next point. All right, so another big sign that your relationship is over is that you can't be yourself with them, all right? So 
he, the unfortunate reality is that many people in trying to get the person that they feel they want become someone they truly are not. All right. Try to fit in a box to accommodate, to win this person over, to gain their, their, their attention and validation, but then end up compromising who they really are and in the process, many times losing themselves. Okay. And then unfortunately, because they've gotten what they want, initially they're writing off the hype, the joy of, I won. I got the prize that I wanted. I, I, I got this relationship, right? You got the, this man or whoever. And at some point, the smoke clears and you realize, one, you can't sustain this. Like the things that you try to be to make him happy, to win him over, whatever the case may be, you can't sustain it. And then you're not happy. You're not at peace. And, but, but you feel kind of stuck because here's the thing. If you get a man not being yourself and he hasn't done anything wrong, like he's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. He's showing you love. He's showing a relationship. Now you're like, how, how can I even leave? You feel trapped. You feel stuck. You know what I'm saying? Because how can you validate walking away from this guy who's done nothing wrong, but you feel in this self-imposed jail because you can't be you? And, and it's unfortunate because when I say you can't, how do you validate? It's like, if you go to your friends and family and try to say, I'm not happy here, they're like, what's wrong with you? He's a good man. Boom, 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 boom. But the whole time, what they don't understand is you can't be you. And therefore, you have no peace here. And you're not happy. And, and, and even though he may be being good right now, to be honest with you, that, that has a time limit on it because at some point... Your unhappiness, you being unsettled, you not having that peace is going to pour over into the relationship to where it's going to start to cause conflict. It's going to start to create more issues that might be more visible. But then at that point, how deeper are we into this? Do we have kids involved now? There's so many things that come into play that can make a woman feel more stuck in the situation. And so this is why it's important that this sign is something that you try to recognize as quickly as possible. Like we don't, we don't want to put ourselves in this situation and then years later realize what's going on and now we have some tough decisions to make. No, you want to establish as quickly as possible, can you be yourself with this man? Can you be the woman that is sustainable in this relationship? Is this truly speaking to your heart? Or are you trying to accommodate things that are at conflict with who you are? But let's focus for a second on you're already in it. You're already feeling stuck. And this is why, again, why I have to mention this as a sign it's over is because you can't keep this up forever. And it's not going to make things better by holding on if you're not able to be you. Now, if... If we're talking something very minor, and I don't even want to say that. I was going to say we're talking something very minor, but I, I don't like trying to get anyone to, to accept losing parts of themselves to try to make things work. Because, I, I, again, I just don't think it's healthy. I just don't believe it works in the long run. And I'm a firm believer that one's true self cannot be suppressed forever. It's going to come out. It's going to find its way to the surface. And at that point, it's going to create some level of conflict if this man is not truly in alignment, in alignment with who the true you is, who, who you truly are at the core. So with that said, and I think that, again, I, I think one of the ways, because sometimes you not being your true self is out of fear rather than they're in unwilling, they're, them having an unwillingness to accept you for who you are. 
okay? And so you have to make sure you're not projecting that onto your partner. And instead, if you're having that, that issue from within and you're feeling conflicted, be transparent, have that conversation, and then walk in your truth, right? Be you and then see if you two can be in harmony together, being your true self. And then otherwise, if you guys see it's it's not working, it, it's not who he wants to be with and so on and so forth, well, then we got to we gotta accept it's over and we got to move in a new direction. All right. So another common reason or common sign that your relationship with him is over is that there is consistent unhealthy communication. Now, this is one of those things where I don't want you to simply jump to the conclusion of, oh, we always have unhealthy communication, it's done. And I say that with, with meaning uh, if you have not addressed it, okay? Because I do think that at times things can get very toxic with the way two people communicate with each other. But I've seen people turn it around. I've seen people when they properly address the issue, they were able to fix it and get to a place of better communication. So we don't need to just assume and jump to the conclusion. We have to address it. But back to, uh, uh, as I mentioned in point number one, when you've addressed that unhealthy communication and it doesn't change, yes, we have a problem. Also, we have to understand when it's not just unhealthy communication, but it's abusive communication. And abusive communication, verbal abuse can easily turn into physical abuse. And unfortunately, a lot of times we don't cut it at the root. All right. And again, when I use the word cut, I don't mean you just cut them off, be done, end it right there because things got a little toxic or did get toxic. It means address it. And if it's not corrected, then yes, we cut it. We don't ignore it. We don't make excuses for it because now that sets the stage for things to potentially get worse. Okay. And that worse can create even more unhealthy attachments because now things go to get taken to another level and it becomes harder for some women to walk away. It becomes harder to they're, they're, the fear of walking away, the fear of what this person may do, like there's so much that goes on. So one, I do want to say for anyone who's already crossed that line where things have gotten abusive, right? Check out the National Domestic Abuse Hotline. Um, I'm going to put the number on the screen. Call them if you need help, you need assistance. There are resources uh, out there for you, okay? So check that out. But... Um, if it has not gotten to that level, but we're still having unhealthy communication, we have to address it. Now, let me also say this. It's, you got to hold yourself accountable as well to engaging in unhealthy or abusive communication. Okay? That's not to excuse the, the, the man's behavior. It's not to make it okay in any kind of way. But you can't be out here talking all reckless and crazy but then your focus is on the fact of how he talks back or how he retaliates or how he continues from there. You got to make sure you're doing your part. And for some of you, your unhealthy or toxic ways of communicating stem from lack of healing, stem from what you've learned in, other unhealth, in, a, in the unhealthy household that maybe you were brought up in or in previous unhealthy relationships all of that is connected to a lack of healing because you have not released those things. And it's important that you do. And it's important that you are not just viewing it from the, from the lens of what you consider unhealthy or abusive, but what your partner considers unhealthy and abusive. So if they say, listen, I don't like the way you talk to me, you got to be willing to hear them out and say, okay, what is that? Why do you say that? How am I talking to you? What am I doing specifically that's making you feel that way? All right. And you got to be willing to make your corrections as well. 
because again, I, I see so many couples that are basically going back and forth with the toxic talk and they're feeding off of each other and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And no one's willing to be the one who takes a step back and says, wait a minute, I got to do better. And, if, and, and my thing is, if you start doing better and they still continue, they insist on remaining toxic and not changing themselves, now you have an even clearer picture that this person, not for you, this relationship, time to end, this ain't going to work. All right. So real quick, if I mentioned the need to heal, if you need help with healing, get my book, Love After Heartbreak. Check it out. I'll leave a link in the description uh, or leave it in the comment section as well. Or you can go to loveaftheheartbreak.com. Just want to throw that out there. But another sign that this relationship is over is you have reached a point where you have different values and want different things. Okay? So I'm going to give an example, a quick story. I once had a client who she was dating a man and... I guess you could say they were in a relationship or somewhat of a relationship. But either way, she wanted kids. He did not. Okay? But she was really into this man. She really liked him. And she wanted to believe that maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe this can work out. And I was constantly trying to tell her, like, listen, if he told you he does not want this, you can't move forward thinking that this will change. You cannot think that somehow you're going to get him to see things differently. He's been very clear. He doesn't want what you want. It is in the best interest of you both to end things now. Unfortunately, she didn't listen for a good minute, right? And it dragged out for a while. Eventually, it did end. But a lot of people are seeing that them that that the values that they have are not in alignment with the values their partner has but they're choosing to hold on because well this person is such a good person or this person does care about me or show me love or you know I do enjoy my time with them and I get it it's great I I I I understand why that would make you want to stay and why that makes it harder to walk away but you have to understand that having different core values, not like, okay, I, I like nature and this person likes the city, even though that can some, for some people, that can cause a problem, okay? Depending on how much of a conflict it is for the other to live in this environment, contrary to what they prefer. However, when it's things like how we want to live, how we want to, what we want to believe in spiritually, uh, how we're going to raise these kids, all these different, there are just important core values that if you're not on the same page with, it is like a ticking time bomb. Like, yeah, it may not be blowing up right now, but it's going to blow up at some point. It, it's going to come to a head. And so... Kicking the can down the road is just asking for more problems. Like, we, we can't solve it by ignoring it. We got to acknowledge it for what it is and just accept that, yes, sometimes you're going to meet good people who are not best for you. Plain and simple. Good man, not the right man. And there's going to be a lot of great things about him, but you two are not in alignment with each other. And if you are hoping for things to change the same way my client was hoping that maybe he'll eventually want kids, well, it's one thing to have that hope while being friends or apart from each other and just being open to maybe he'll come back around and he'll have a new perspective and we can move forward. But to hope while continuing to engage in a relationship or in the dating process or whatever, to be romantically involved with each other is asking for trouble, okay? So you got to recognize and accept that this is just a sign. The relationship is done. We need to move forward in a new direction. All right, 
So I got another sign and I got a bonus message for you. So the other sign, another sign that the relationship is over with him is that there is no trust. Now, I stress the word no, because let me share this with you. I, I don't expect anyone to give 100% trust to any person on this earth. I honestly think that's a mistake. If I look at it from a biblical perspective, God said, trust no man. All right. Now, I'm not saying I walk around living in distrust, but I understand that as human beings, anyone can fall short. Anyone can do something shady. Anyone can make a mistake. Anyone can hurt you, whether it be intentional or not. Like things happen. You can't put anything past anyone. You just never know, okay? So I'm kind of a 99%, but that 1% I leave to just understand there's room for error, okay? Now, some people may disagree with that, but I think if you look at it from a very realistic and reasonable perspective, it will make a lot of sense. But the key difference is, it's one thing to say I don't give anyone complete 100% trust because I understand the reality of being a human being versus living in a relationship of distrust, of constantly thinking this man is doing something wrong, of constantly not being able to take his word for what it is, constantly living in this anxiety, tension, negativity. If there is no trust, right? If, if, if he has violated it so many times and you have not been able to rebuild it, because listen, there are going to be situations where trust is damaged, maybe even lost for a season, but through the right efforts and the right approach, it can be rebuilt, okay? But if we are at a point where it's gone and you just live in this very negative state with this individual, relationship is done. If there is no trust, there is no relationship, all right? There has to be some kind of foundation there. And so you got to be honest with yourself about how far or how much damage has been done that you're unwilling to or unable to come back from, all right? And not just because, I, again, I some of y'all might think, well, if there's no trust, who would stay? Trust and believe there's tons of people who have no trust with their partner, and they're still there, all right? Because that's still different from the willingness to walk away, the, the, the other factors that might be in play. Some people just accept it as, well, you know, it is what it is. This is what happens in relationships, unfortunately. But either way, it, it leads to just a very miserable existence in that relationship. So again, you know, as I've said multiple times, you got to address the root. Don't dismiss the, the possibility that this can be rebuilt if both sides are willing to put in the work. All right. I also feel the need to mention because it's hitting my spirit. I've seen some situations where like I remember one time I was speaking at an event and a man came to me and he said, man, I'm trying to make my relationship better. I've been trying so hard for the past year, but it doesn't seem like anything's working. I'm like, well, what happened? He said, well, they went through a very rough patch where, you know, they were very disconnected. He, I forgot what the reason was that led to it. But he said he did step out once. I know some of y'all are like, oh, hell no, nah, ain't nothing to rebuild, Right. But hear me out. So he said this about it was a one-time occurrence. It wasn't an ongoing affair. Not trying to make it sound like that makes it okay. I'm just saying, okay? One-time thing. He said he made a mistake. He fessed up to it. Um, and of course, that hurt the woman. And he said, you know, he told her he's willing to do whatever it takes to rebuild the trust. And so in this scenario, he was doing what he, like everything that she wanted him to do after, she, he was doing and the point I want to make here is like, if, if you're going to remain there because she was still in a relationship with him, 
If you're going to remain there and he's doing his part to rebuild and you refuse to accept it, you got to come to a point where you say, okay, either if I'm not going to accept this man's efforts to rebuild, then what are we doing here? There's, there, what's the point? Because now it becomes torture. Now it becomes, and again, I understand. I always say you do the crime, you got to do the time. But we, we got to be able to make progress and get to a better place if efforts are being made. Also, sometimes, I'm going to throw this out there, sometimes we don't want to accept the effort and rebuild the trust because we're afraid it'll be betrayed again. And though I understand that, this is where healing comes into play. We got to be able to go through the process of releasing some things because sometimes the fear of being betrayed again isn't just based off of that person uh, falling short. It's based on the people who've hurt us before and now here it happened again with our partner. So to us, this is a reoccurring pattern in our life so we feel like we can't trust anyone to do right. So we don't want to now let them regain any level of our trust. Okay? But that still means we got to address all the root stuff that we've been holding on to if we are saying we're going to remain this relationship. Again, if you're saying, nah, he messed up, that's it. All right, then, then it's over. No trust, it's over. But if you're going to stay... If you're going to remain there, then we have to make a, a real conscious effort to be able to move to overcome that obstacle and get to a better place in this relationship. All right. So I said I had a bonus for you. And this last thing I want to mention of a sign the relationship is over is that there is no connection. Now, this is. This is something that not everyone's going to agree with because I don't, I don't think everyone believes in connection the way that I believe in it. And there's a lot of people who have carried on for many, many years relationship with no connection. Okay? But to me, when there is no connection, there isn't true happiness in a relationship. There isn't, there isn't what needs to flow out of it, both for the individuals involved, what needs to happen for the kids. Like, to me, what you have is two people just tolerate, after a certain point, it's just two people tolerating each other. And that's just not healthy. And it's not good. And for most people, when that connection doesn't exist, though some people have been able to carry on and even go all the way to their grave being with someone who they had no connection with, most people aren't going to make it that far. Most people at some point, that lack of connection is going to show itself and it's going to wreak havoc in that relationship or it's going to expose what is missing in that relationship in a way that those individuals are going to be unhappy. It's going to create conflict. It could contribute to people going outside of the relationship. And it's just, it's just to me, something that should not be overlooked. And this is one of those signs that, again, we don't wait till we're deep in the relationship to accept it for what it is. We got to recognize that from the jump. If there's not a connection here, let's not even move forward. Let's not try to force this and make this work. If it's not there, it's not there. And I always say a connection is not something that you can create. It's either there or it's not. All right? So be mindful of that, be aware of that, because with that connection, I am, a, I am of the belief that two people can really make things work and overcome the obstacles when they have the foundation of connection. But without it, it's just a battle, not, it's, it's just a setup for so much to go wrong. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on why a man won't leave a woman before cheating that he wants but something has gone awry and he's hoping for it to come but then he succumbs to his needs his flesh whatever in trying to get those things those needs met and he gets it outside all right